Jared Goff in the Rams' 2019 season didn't go as planned. Interception numbers went up, touchdown throws went down, and the Rams missed the playoffs after playing in the Super Bowl in 2018. While the scrutiny has been on Jared Goff after signing his $134 million contract, the Rams' offensive line went from being ranked 5th in the NFL in 2018 to dropping all the way to 31st in 2019. Despite getting rid of the ball faster and running more play action in 2019, Goff and the Rams still experienced pressure at a rate of 4% higher than the year prior. While Goff has some issues locking onto receivers, getting follow through with his back leg, and dipping his shoulders at times, it's hard to be mad at a guy who's experiencing pressure by the time he's at the top of his drop. Throw in the fact that McVay's offense relies on longer developing routes on shallow crosses and deep shots downfield off play action, and you've got a recipe for a disappointing season. That being said, when Goff has a clean pocket, he's rated as the sixth best quarterback in the league over the last three years. Goff's mechanics are some of the best in the league. He's incredibly consistent in his base, his footwork and throwing motion, his feet stay wide, he moves with subtlety and quickness in the pocket, and he can stand strong in the face of pressure and deliver good catchable balls. Part of Goff's tendency to lock on or struggle was that he just flat out didn't have enough time to read anything other than the first thing he saw because pressure was there so fast. Despite a lackluster 2019, Goff can 100% get the job done and be worth the huge contract he signed. Let's take a look at what Goff is bringing to the table and what went wrong for the Rams in 2019. As mentioned before, Goff is one of the best in the league in a clean pocket. Here on play action, he keeps a perfect base with his feet just outside of his shoulders, throws with anticipation before the receiver is even out of their break, brings his leg all the way through, and delivers a dart 25 yards downfield on the sideline. Throws like these are exactly why the Rams decided to pay him $134 million. Here he is again showing great anticipation and mechanics as he begins his throwing motion before the receiver has cleared the linebacker. He understands where the hole in the zone will be, keeps a good base on his hitch steps, and brings his leg through for the throw. The Rams are exploiting the weakness of cover two here, and McVay schemes it up so that the middle linebacker is pulled up on the spot route by Gurley, which leaves the window open on the second level for Cooper Cup. If the safety comes up too hard on that dig, you have a post coming in behind him. Goff can dice defenses up out of a clean pocket. His arm talent and ball placement is exceptional when he has nobody at his feet. You can see him ear hold defenders that are trailing in coverage and fit the ball into the window between the corner and the safety here in this clip. The touch and accuracy are super impressive time after time. He makes small movements in the pocket that help keep his feet and his base underneath him while he avoids pressure. He constantly keeps his eyes downfield and looks like a top tier quarterback when he's standing in the pocket. On play action and rollouts, he shows touch and accuracy. He can drop it over linebackers and in front of safeties or drive the balls on crossers. His eyes stay downfield, he's mobile, and he understands the flow and position of the defense. Despite his statistical struggles with pressure, he's definitely not afraid of standing strong in the pocket and delivering the ball. This indicates that he has the ability to start fixing his poor rating under pressure. The issue is that sometimes this pressure is so quick and immediate out of his drop or run fake on play action, that Goff only has time to read one thing. This can lead to some rush mechanics where he doesn't follow through, has shoulder lean, or can lead to poor decision making where he doesn't have time to verify where defenders are. This all results in miscommunication with receivers, bad interceptions, or just plain inaccurate balls. It's hard to blame him when his back is turned to the defense on a run fake, and when he does turn around he has pressure in his face immediately and has to locate and diagnose a defense. This is why McVay's system is so reliant on an offensive line. It's not just building off of outside zone that helps it go, they also need to give extended time to the quarterback on play action since his back is turned to the defense for the first second of the play. A lot of times, Goff simply doesn't have enough time to execute the scheme, which is why you saw his numbers dips and the success of the Rams go with it. That being said, there are clearly times when he isn't seeing the field the same way his receivers are. He can expect the back shoulder, throw a ball skinny when the receiver is running flat, or throw to a window when the receiver isn't ready. These aren't mechanical inaccuracies, they're just conceptual and scheme issues where he and the receiver aren't on the same page. While Goff's mechanics are usually pretty good, he does have an issue with shoulder lean when he drives balls. Ideally, when completing the throwing motion, you want your hips and your shoulders parallel with the ground. When you tilt or lean, it can cause vertical inaccuracy on your balls because you're now releasing it at a higher apex point and you're less consistent from throw to throw. The same thing happens when he leaves his leg on the follow through. It prevents full hip rotation and reduces the power of the throw, which makes his throws less accurate and in some cases prevents scoring plays. 
This issue crops up from time to time and generally just reduces his power and velocity on the throw. This causes balls to be late or inaccurate and disallows potential yards after the catch. You can see here he leaves his leg and he's falling backwards and the ball ends up being low. Despite these occasional issues with his follow through and shoulder lean, Goff is one of the most mechanically clean quarterbacks that I've seen. His base is always solid, he has an efficient throwing motion, good hip rotation, he can put touch on the ball and understands defensive vulnerabilities. His mobility in the pocket is also a big strength of his. Almost any quarterback would struggle with the 31st ranked offensive line in the league, and Goff is no exception. The Rams offense is predicated on running the ball and having time to let routes develop on play action. Without those two things, they're gonna struggle. It's clear to me that Goff is not the problem in LA. If that offensive line can just get back to average, the Rams will look like a completely different team. With an NFC West division that's now chock full of talent and elite teams, the Rams will need that line to step up. If they do, there's no reason that Goff and those skill positions can't make another run at a Super Bowl. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. It helps us out tremendously. Comment below who you'd like me to analyze next, and make sure to check out our website, weeklyspiral.com, where you can read all our latest content, including a written form of this video with GIFs. You can also find our Patreon and social handles and all that stuff there as well. Until next time, I'm Casey Sully, and I'll see you on the next Film Breakdown.